Okay, so tra oops, trig identities are, well, first of all, the word identity. The word identity in math just means a, a statement, something that's true for all values of whatever variable you're using. This is something that's true for any value you put in there for n. Okay, well, I mean, it's, it's a pretty obvious one. Uh, you know, some number times 1 is always equal to that number, right? Whatever number you pick times 1, it's always equal to that number. Or this one's always true, right? Whatever whatever real number you pick there for n, if you multiply it by 0, it's equal to 0. Those are obvious statements, but that's what an identity is. It's a statement that's always true for every value of that variable. Right? Things that you have that are equations before, you know, 3x plus 2 equals, uh, I don't know, 10 or something like that. This is not true for every value of the variable there, right? That's not, that, there's only actually one value that that's true for. These are true for every value of the variable. So they're called identities. Sometimes you have restrictions on, uh, on variables, which you know already. You looked at that pretty extensively in grade 10, I think. Non-permissible values. This identity is true for every value that you pick for n, except there are some restrictions. Some restrictions apply. What's true here? Certain values n can't be. n can't be 0, right? So really, if you, if you wrote this identity, you'd have to put the restriction with it, okay? A trig identity, then, is, of course, is some statement that has trig functions in it. We could, um, we could write trig identities based on some of the things we wrote up here. You could write a trig identity that says this expression right here is always equal to uh, this expression right here. Like that is, that's a trig identity because all we used is algebra to show that these are equal. Those should be equal for every value you pick and in fact there's no restrictions there. No matter what you pick for x, that's always going to be true. That's an identity. No matter, no matter what the value of x is, that's a true statement. What we're going to do in this unit, first of all, is just do some simplifying. You're going to be given an expression, and you need to work with it and simplify it down to something else. But then we're going to do some proving of trig identities. You'll be given something like this and say, show that this is true. Now, this is obviously a pretty straightforward one because you can use one algebraic step and show that they're equal. Some of the ones we do are going to involve lots of steps. Um, you know some identities. Now, here's going to be some basic. Today, you're going to get five basic identities, four of which you already know. Three of them are just definition type of identities. Cosecant is always equal to 1 over, which one goes with this? 1 over sine x. This is, this is basic identity number one, I would say. There's the other two that go with it. There's the secant of x is always equal to 1 over cos. And the third one is cotangent of x is always equal to 1 over tangent. Those are called reciprocal identities for fairly obvious reasons. Those are reciprocal trig functions. There's two other that are called quotient identities. One of them came up, although you might not remember it. It's a different one for tangent. It's a different one other than uh, that tangent's the reciprocal of, of uh, cotangent. Yeah, it's sine x over cos x. That one came up when, uh, when we were looking at the unit circle. Oops. When you're looking at the unit circle and you had a point here where this is y and this is x, right? your unit circle was here. We were looking at the angle in here. That's one. We learned that the the sine was y and the cosine was x. And you learned that the tangent was y over x. I shouldn't be using x here. I should be using theta. Sorry. Theta. Can't use both. You learned that the tangent was y over x. If, if y is sine and x is cos, then the tangent has to be y over x or sine over cosine, right? You can look back at that after if you can't remember the reason for that. There's another one that goes with this, and it could actually just be combining two ideas that you have here. If this is true, if cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, and tangent is equal to this fraction right here, what does cotangent have to be equal to? 
cos x over sin x, right? It's the reciprocal of this one. Now I used x here. I mean, you know, a lot of times we're going to use a theta for this variable here. You just have to get used to paying attention, I suppose. For for this uh, tutorial, these are the five basic identities. If it ever talks about basic using basic identities, those are the five that we're going to use. We're going to add other identities to that as we go. Um, more like after lunch, I would say. You can check this or verify this several ways. You can substitute specific values in and check. Okay, if you take your calculator um, and you put specific values in there, if you and and you've you've done this before, right? Let's say we do 0.43 radians here. Tangent of 0.43 gives us that. If we do sine of 0.43 divided by cosine of 0.43. That should be the same thing, right? Any value you pick, it's going to work, except for certain values where you're going to get that this expression is undefined. Well, like tangents can be undefined as well. There's certain things where that, where both of those are undefined. Now, instead of thinking about what angles this is and writing it down, for some reason they often do the restrictions on this in terms of other trig functions. It's the simplest way to write the restriction is to say cos x cannot be what? Like the thing on the bottom can't be zero. zero, right? You run into problems when you write the restrictions of certain functions using other functions, but that's unfortunately what they do here. Um, for each of these things, sine, for this one, sine x can't be zero. In fact, I mean, you know this already. If you look at where the asymptotes of cotangent are, it's where sine is zero. The, the function is undefined where sine is zero. If you look where, um, where the asymptotes of the tangent graph are, they're where cotangent is zero. And so on, similar to things up here. We'll leave this one for a while because that's the one that gets uh, confusing. But um, this one here, cos can't be... Zero, sine can't be zero. You could always start to write down the angles if you want, but they write restrictions for things sometimes using other functions. The other way you could verify this, of course, is by graphing y1, y2. Look at each side. That isn't a proof, but it's a way of checking. If the two graphs look uh, look the same, then you're okay. All right, now I know this is a lot for first uh, time at the beginning here. But we're gonna look at, we're gonna look at this. I'm gonna stop this first.